and let's go. So when you open up ZBrush, it's not going to show this. It's going to kind of show something more akin to uh, this and this. Uh, whoops, there we go. So this is your light box. This is uh, this is like where they have a lot of default sort of. Oh, Mike, I think your screen's showing. Oh, really? Screen, Mike. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Oh, it canceled that when the internet dropped out for a second. Shoot, shoot. There we go. Share. All right. So you're you're when you open up ZBrush, you're gonna be looking at something that, uh, sort of akin to this. Um, now uh, there's a bunch of like useful stuff in here, like brushes and stuff, but we don't need to worry about that. Um, what we're looking for is under the project tab right here and Dynamesh Sphere. It's, it's just a very, very basic project. Um, and it's just good to sort of get our bearings. So if we double click that, you'll see that it loads this up. And this is ZBrush, my friends. This is ZBrush. Let me switch to the default. Um, and immediately, uh, you're going to want to whip out your styluses, right? Get that, get those tablets ready and get your stylus ready because we're going to start just pushing on this. Um, if you go across the surface, you can see, oh, sorry, I have some weird intensity settings on this. Um, you'll see that you can kind of build up on that surface by just by just you know dragging your your mouse across it right now something very integral to any 3d program is how the hell do i orbit around this i need to see every single like i can't just sculpt the front of things forever uh, i need to look at every single angle uh, in order to do that you simply click off the mesh and just drag around see so I just take my stylus over here, pen down, and then just drag that around, right? Pretty simple, pretty simple. Now you're probably wondering like, eh, how do I like pan though? So we're just kind of orbiting, but how do, I, how do I really pan the camera? So to do that, it's again, clicking off of the mesh because you click on the mesh, right? And you're just gonna start drawing on there. Um, click off the mesh, but uh, this time hold Alt. So you can hold Alt and click off the mesh. You can drag your camera around. Boom. Simple. Simple. Now to zoom, right? Because you might do some like fine detailing on this. In order to zoom, it's very, very similar to those two operations. Um, you're basically going to hold Alt and then pen down out, out here, so you're kind of able to pan around. But instead of letting go of the pen, you let go of Alt during this, and then drag. It's a very weird hotkey to get used to, very weird. But trust me, guys, once you get, once you get fast at it, whoo, it feels crispy. It's going to feel very crispy. Um, so yeah, definitely. Definitely get just let's just take a little bit of time to get familiar with that with with those camera controls. I want you guys to be able to, to sort of draw across this the sphere and then pan and zoom out and in nicely. That's gonna that's gonna have to become second nature. You're gonna want to not even think about that because you're gonna be spending a lot of time in ZBrush, you know. Uh, you don't want to be like, oh, how do I how do I move the camera again? Like, just let's just use a little bit of time and get get that sort of built into the muscle memory of you. Now, a cool thing about the orbit, this this little orbiting camera, is that if you hold shift while you're dragging it around, boom. It's gonna lock you to perspectives right here, different perspectives. And that's super cool for, uh, especially if you're like looking at reference that you can just be like, all right, I'm just gonna hold shift, boom. And I'm like locked on the front. That way your front uh, reference really looks clean, and looks correct, you know, you can really measure it up to that. 
And we're going to go over importing reference in a little bit, but we I want you guys to play around for a while before we do that. So yeah, just get used to dragging your mouse across the surface of this thing and orbiting that camera. And make sure you know how to zoom as well. Yeah, just have a little bit of fun with it. For those of you who are bored at this point already and are camera masters, um, I wanna show you guys a little bit of kind of extra, uh, they, well, not extra, just basic functions of drawing on here. So right now, I'm just kind of moving my mouse across here, right? But some of it's getting kind of lumpy. Some of it's getting like hard to control. Uh, I kind of want to smooth that out, right? So in order to smooth, you just go on the surface, or you just get your mouse over the surface right here, and hold shift. Now, when you press shift, I'm just I'm spamming shift right now. You'll notice up here that this icon changes, right? And it's going from standard, which is this little kind of push out brush, to smooth. So I'm sure you can piece together that this is the brush that you're using to sculpt with. You'll see that whatever is up there. And the same goes for my tutorials. If you ever see, if you're ever like, because I use hotkeys to switch between brushes. Um, and you're, if you're like lost on like which brush I'm using at, at a current moment, uh, feel free to take a peek at my little brush palette here. Uh, now, I'm going to scare you guys a little bit. You guys can get a little bit scared. Don't worry. Be, be, be courageous. Because if you click on this brush, you'll see that there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a shit ton of brushes. And if we kind of just step, take a step back and look at the UI, you'll see that there's a shit ton of buttons too. I'm going to be honest, guys. The ZBrush UI, unfriendly. Very unfriendly. Not fun. Not intuitive, not cool. Look at all these like sub menus. I prefer Maya's over it, like by a lot, by a long shot, you know. So yeah, just just but like don't worry about it though, because I'm gonna show you guys basically like eight tools out of this entire menu set, and then that's what that's what you're gonna use. That's what you're gonna get comfortable with, and you'll be able to make pretty much any shape out of that. Uh, most pros don't even use a lot of these tools either. Like a lot of them just use basic brushes, basic operations in here. There's just like a, a few that are really good for, uh, for things, you know, that, or there's a few that are really good for like pretty much every general skill. Um, a lot of these like buttons are just, you know, tiny detail stuff that you don't really need to, to know about in order to get going and and get your feet on the ground in ZBrush, you know. Um, so back to what I was saying about pressing shift. So if I hold shift and then go over it, look at it smoothing out that surface. Oh, what the hell? Hell yeah. Now we're getting those smooth forms, you know. Smooth shapes in here. Right? kind of looking like a butt so let's try to smooth that out so it's not as butt like but you know we're not bothered by a butt or two in art classes you know we've been through the the figure drawing phase but yeah so this is this is called smoothing and it's going to be very uh it's going to be a very basic part of sort of modeling in zbrush right because you're gonna you're gonna frequently pull things out um, and it's gonna, it, you might bring it too far and you wanna push it back in. Um, now there's one quick detail about this that I want everyone to know about. Um, there's regular smoothing. So look at these little bump guys right here that I made. If I smooth those down, they just immediately fall back into the surface, right? Um, however, if I hold shift and put my pen down, and then let go of shift and then start drawing. 
it's going to start averaging out those points. See how it kind of retains the information a little bit better and sort of averages out those verts. That's the main way I do my smoothing and that's called alternate smoothing. It's kind of hard to find documentation on it. That's why I want to share that little tidbit, uh, tidbit at the start. But yeah, so that is, that's smoothing for you. So, so 90% of the time, if I'm not trying to destroy a form that I made like this, if I'm not trying to do that, I'm using alternate smoothing. So it's, again, that's uh, your regular smooth button, mouse down, let go, smooth button, and then start dragging. See how it keeps that little bump there? Uh, it still smooths down, you know, but it's, it's gonna be a lot more of a desired effect there. So I, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna conduct this the same way that I conduct uh, my starter class, right? Uh, the, the computer animation one. Uh, basically, uh, we're gonna, I'm just gonna kind of show you guys how to sculpt like a little bit of a face. And I'm gonna go over a few different brushes in this entire stack of brushes. So feel free to write down notes and be like, this brush is for this, this brush is for this, this is what it's good at. Like that's completely, uh, that'll, that'll really serve you well. Feel free to rewatch the, the lecture as well, but I'm gonna get going on some different brushes. Um, right before that though, we've, we've talked about shift and we've talked about regular mouse drawing on this to kind of bevel it out. But what if we wanna push in on that surface, right? What if I didn't want these huge lumps here? What we could do, is hold alt. Alt is gonna do the opposite of whatever your brush does, you know? So if I hold alt and then I go on the surface right here, boom, that's gonna push it in there. It's gonna push on that surface. And you're like, ah, it's too messy now. Now you can just smooth it out. Now you can just smooth it out. I want you guys to get familiar with using these brushes in conjunction with each other. This is too, deep in there we can sort of build that up and then smooth it out so we don't get crazy deformed shapes you know we want to we want to keep the lumpiness out of these models especially at this low poly level you know like we're not we're not super high poly yet so we want to control these bumps especially when we're working when we're just starting out with zbrush absolutely stay low poly while you can you know uh, i see it all the time that students go a little bit too high poly and then they get overwhelmed because it's it as the surface gets higher poly like if you divide it up a bunch there it's going to get harder to smooth out and make clean forms so yeah let's just get used to that for a little bit i want everyone to know about alt to sort of carve in at the at the mesh and then regular left click to build out and shift to smooth shift smooth and then let go of shift and keep on dragging to alternate smooth because that will that will be very useful uh so before i get into brushes like and before we start exploring this stuff um does anyone have any questions anyone, anyone running into problems Any problems? Okay. All right. All right. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. Um, okay. So let's keep, let's get going on, on some brushes then. So let me find a document real quick. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Sorry, I have to dig through my class folder real quick.
Shoot, where is it? Okay, Discord, one second. Yeah. Even further back, yeah. Keep going. Sorry, sorry. Got to find. There we go. All right, so I'm going to post this in our chat on Discord. I'm going to put it in resources. Um, it's basically a little virtual handout. And it's over, it's just the, the basics, super basic. So it's talking about camera controls, uh, brushes. It has like little hotkeys to access them. I eventually bind these to just be one key. But we're going to go over standard. We've already talked about smoothing and alt smoothing. We're going to talk about clay. We're going to definitely talk about move and move topological and damn standard. There's also going to be one uh, called H polish or trim dynamic. Either one of those are going to get some, some similar effects. So just get, get used to those brushes on that list. Also, just feel free feel free to explore like other brushes and see what really resonates with you. But without further ado, I'm going to start showing you guys how to make a face. Let's and let's let's all try to make a face along with me. And then we can post it on our on our uh, our discord. And uh, we don't we don't have to commit to making the face for our project. Uh, but I just want you guys to get like a little bit of a, a handle on things. This will be a nice little sketch for us. So I'm going to I'm gonna go to Lightbox up here. I don't want any of this kind of mess around stuff. Uh, I'm going to start with a Dynamesh Sphere again, 128. So project has been changed. Like I said, changes and no, right there. And this this project's good because it starts you off with symmetry on and everything, so you can sculpt on here. Um, so it's it's a really nice base for everything. Uh, I like to also if you want to turn off symmetry eventually. The hot key for that is X. So just be aware of that um, because your symmetry, you, but let's just keep it on for now because, uh, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to do two halves of the same face at the same time. It's just going to be torturous, you know. Um, all right. So normally I'd, I'd recommend you get some reference in your scene, but, uh, or, or like on another monitor somewhere for a face. It's very handy um don't work without reference and that's what i said as i immediately start working without reference uh, so don't mind me however uh, what we're looking for is a brush called move topological in here or regular move both are going to do the same for us for right now um, move topological performs slightly differently and it, it does end up being the one that I use most of the time. So click your move topological brush right there. And then you'll notice that it's just, it's basically a soft selection in Maya that you just pull around. Just a soft select, but I'm gonna undo that because I basically use this to start forming the sort of size of the head, the overall size. And you might be thinking like, Mike, this brush is too fucking tiny to like push that entire head. So that brings us to our draw size up here. So you'll see at the very top, you have draw size. The slider controls that. The uh, hotkeys for it are the hard brackets. Um, very similar to Photoshop's brush controls. It's these little, these little rectangular brackets that I just posted in chat. Um, or space bar. So if I press space bar, you'll see that I have draw size right here that I can pull that around with and re really resize that brush. So I'm going to go with something massive, right? Massive brush coming in right here. And 
We're just going to pull this into the head shape that we want. Getting that head shaped to our preference. Uh, remember, you can. The, I always use space bar, but I also just split that out into a different hotkey that's kind of close to my hand um, because I'm left handed and space bar is kind of like, I don't know, it, it, it's my own setup, you know. But, but yeah, so I split that off into its own control. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to go about making the general shape of a head. General shape, right? And feel free to do this along with me because I want to I want to see you guys post in the art sharing channel what your heads look like as we get a little bit further into this. Um, so we have we have some shapes in here now. Everything's pretty pretty much uh, in a general spot. You might want to sink these in a little bit. I want to sink the front in a little bit there. And then I like to, since we just started stretching things out right there a little bit, I always like to just hold, hold shift, mouse down, let go shift, and do a little bit of alternate smoothing to get, it'll just spread out the polys nicely, you know, and not destroy that, that shape too much. So yeah, now we can uh, go in with, our, uh, let's explore the clay brushes. I was, I was gonna say that we can go in with our standard brush right, right here. Uh, you can also, this is also organized alphabetically. So you can always find your standard brush if you need to in there. Um, I've already bound standard brush to a hotkey that I can just easily press once. And then it, then it just gives, it, gives me that tool immediately. Um, but what we're gonna look at are the clay brushes. So clay, clay buildup, Clay tubes, those are all those are all amazing tools for for building form. So if we click on clay, we can play around here. Let's let's try to form a nose, right? So with clay right here, notice that it kind of caps out. So you're kind of layering it on, and then you can smooth it out. So you feel free to just keep on adding layers of clay here. And smoothing it out to make it to make a sort of nose shape. Feel free to do that. And then say say you're like, ah, this nose is too wide. Kind of looks like a, a me character from uh, the Wii back in the day. Um, you can always go into move topological and just snap your camera to the front and start just scaling that in the in that direction, you know. That, that move topological brush is going to save you so much time. You can even move in these these sort of the uh, the orbital uh, cavity for that for that eye socket. You can sort of start moving that in. You know, and my my eyes are a bit too high on the head, so I'm going to make a big move tool right there and just push that down. Get it to be a, in, in a believable spot, you know. Uh, this this head in general might be a bit too wide, so let's let's work out just getting that shape in there, right? We're just trying to trying to get some nice regular head sizes in here. So we got a little bit of that in there. I, I also recommend trying clay buildup. Because if you rec look at clay, kind of caps out there, which is useful, you know, you, you can make some cool things with that. Uh, but clay buildup, there's no cap on it. Look at that. Oh, it's just pushing that geo. Oh, God. Um, don't stretch out your geo like this. It's going to get like crumpled if you do that. So we like to, we like to build slowly and methodically. Um, you'll notice that that it defaults in with this alpha on it on the brush. So if you do, if you use, um, if you use clay buildup at home, out of the box, it's just going to use this like square in there. I really like turning off the alpha though. So if you click on the alpha, go to alpha off. You get this nice smooth buildup. Super good for building forms. 
I love it. That might be my favorite brush in ZBrush right there. Nice and simple. And I'm going to start just using that. I'm just going to use clay buildup to sort of push on the, whoops. Sorry, my, my computer lags whenever I'm recording. So then I get some really weird uh, keystrokes happening. I'm going to move this nose down a little bit. Now it's looking like a Minecraft villager. Let's get that fixed up. Here we go. And I'm just going to use my clay buildup again, kind of carve in at the centers here, right? I really want to build up that the cheekbones and the nose. Right there. I'm just kind of going over those big muscle groups in the face, right? It's looking a bit too round and cartoony, you know? So feel free to push that in. These backs are gonna have to pinch back in as well. I'm just using clay buildup for all of this pretty much. Clay buildup and smooth and move. Those are like the three sort of tools that I use. Uh, feel free to find another clay brush, like clay tubes is good uh, as well. If you want a softer uh, way of doing this, then feel free to check out standard, as well, the standard brush that we were using before. And yeah, we're just building on these forms, guys. Anyone running into problems? Anyone having difficulties? Not hearing any complaints yet. No complaints. But I'm sure there will be some. The ZBrush always has a trick up its sleeve, you know. Let's build out this jaw. Kind of define that. That lag does really messes with it. There we go. So we're kind of creating something now. And don't worry about the ears just yet, because I want to show you guys something cool in ZBrush. That's also on that little handout. It's called Dynamesh. Um, and don't worry about the eyes yet. Let's just kind of work at our other forms, you know. And yeah, so this, this is ZBrush. Like, look how, think about how, like, annoying this would have been to make in Maya, right? Like, this was, like, this would take so long to just get something something fleshed out here, but we like already have like a like almost a full head, you know. It's gonna take a lot of refinement for sure, you know. But but we're already like way ahead of where we would be in Maya. I'm gonna bring this jaw down a little bit, make that a bit stronger. I think this guy's cheekbones are too popping right here. So let's I'm just gonna use my move brush and move that back in, you know. Get that plane of the face more uh, more sloped right there. I 
again, I'm just using clay buildup, move, and smooth for like pretty much all this. It's like a lot of the uh, tools that you'll be using for for sculpting these. Um, I also like to at this point kind of build out the eyelids. So I like to think of the eyelids as sort of uh, as if they were closed already, you know, as if this person were, were closing their eyes. Uh, it's just a lot easier to deal with for now. We don't have to insert a sphere or anything. We can just kind of put that geo where it, it potentially would be. Um, and yeah. The more you study face anatomy, the, the better your sculpts are going to get. Um, that's what I've been doing in, in my off time, you know, is kind of experimenting with that, getting better at it. Because I'd like to push on my photorealistic skills. I've been doing a lot of stylized stuff. I want to kind of branch out a little bit, become a bit more diverse. Point, I'm probably going to use my move tool, sort of mess with these shapes a little bit, get them to where I want. I think the back is like too protruding right here, so I'm kind of just pushing that back in, bullying the surface, if you will. in as well. You always have those, you have that little muscle right here that controls, I believe, your, your clenching of your jaw. So let's get a little bit of that in there. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to let you guys just work at this for, for you know, Couple, couple more minutes, and then I'm going to show you how to attach an ear and a neck. So while we're while we're exploring the sea brush, what are we, how are you guys feeling about it? Is it feeling dope? Feeling interesting? Is it giving you is it giving you ideas? Tam is feeling it. Tam is feeling it.
for the math, I'm just kind of piling on some clay right here, or digital clay, I should say. Um, and I'm going to use a new brush that we haven't looked at yet, which is super sick. I love this brush. This is another, it's another one of my like top, top five brushes is Dam Standard or Damien Standard. Uh, it's called Dam Standard, but it's made by a guy named Damien. So, um, and what this is amazing at is drawing big creases on the model. See this? It's like starting to look like some sort of cyberpunk 2077 guy with some like implants in his face, you know, some really weird stuff like that. Um, that's like what it's amazing at. But you can also use it to, to create things like the lips. Absolutely. Um, you, can like, you can pinch, I like to pinch this outside first. Um, because it, it, it'll naturally form that sort of divot on the outsides of your mouth. Uh, and you can kind of smooth this right there a little bit. Oh, auto saving my project. Uh, and then you can kind of just make the rest of the lips across there. And uh, something about the lips is that the, the, the bottom one Usually, uh, it doesn't point out as as far away from your face as your top one. So your top one is always a little bit over, um, unless you, unless if you have an underbite, if your character has an underbite like that, um, that might that might change things. That'd be interesting, but uh, but yeah. So if we push this out here. And uh, your, your chin usually doesn't poke out past your bottom lip either. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a three-part sort of thing that like it slopes into the nose. It's just a general sort of anatomy feature, you know. If I look from the front, my mouth is just way too wide, way too wide. Let me see if I can smooth some of this outside out. And... And maybe move some of that back in. And there we go. There we go. All right. So we got something going on. I might want to add a little bit of clay build up here because it doesn't, doesn't really compress like that. An actual mouth. Yeah, so I got, I got something going on here. It's nothing insane, but uh, you know, we're working on it. Um, now I want to talk to you guys about adding objects onto this and fusing it with the surface, right? So basically, I'm going to show you guys how to make an ear and then attach that ear and making a neck and attach that neck. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys that twice. Uh, so let's start with the neck. It's more basic. Let's get a neck on this head. Necks are very important for the head. And uh, there's a few ways we can do this. I'll show you both um, eventually. But for now, I'm just going to show you the, the simple way. So it's another brush. It's another brush that inserts another mesh into this object. So what we're looking for is IMM primitives, L right here. Not primitives H, because that's going to be half of the actual object, you know? It's going to be half of that uh, sphere or, or, or box or cone or whatever you put in there. So looking for IMM primitives L, click on this. It's going to give you all the primitives that you can draw on top of here. Uh, so if you wanted to draw a capsule, boom, you can just drag that across the surface. No problem. However, what we're looking for is insert sphere. Insert sphere on here, or any of the spheres really, but that's that's the best one. It's like the highest poly, uh, and we're going to stretch this out, you know. So, so I'm just going to drag from the middle, and boom, right there. And my next step immediately, I'm going to go into my move brush, move or move topological. Also, if you, if you really like using this this palette, like this brush palette, keep in mind that your recently used 
brushes always pop up up here. They're always on top. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go into move topological. Boom. And I'm just going to we're going to bully this sphere into shape, you know. I'm going to be smooth as well. Get this exactly where we want it. Right, so we're at that, that's now coming out of the base of the head. And we're expanding this, pulling this up. I'm, this is all move brush, right? All move brush. Move brush is power. Sorry, ZBrush is lagging right there. If you, if you ever see me just stop moving for a little bit, probably because ZBrush has just decided to die for a second. So we're just getting this into a general position. Might be a bit too thick at the bottom. I might need to push that in and pull out up here. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. So now, you'll notice that if I go to my other brushes, I can only use, I can only clay build up on this, on the neck. Like, what the hell? And my head is like this dark gray. Like, what is, what's going on? Mike, help. Mike, help. So it's nothing, nothing big. Nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, basically, what this dark gray means is that it's masked off. Like, there's a mask on this. Uh, basically telling ZBrush that you can't move those points. You just can't move them. Um, and we can make our own masks by using control. Notice how control makes it a mask pen brush. And we can kind of, ooh, look at that. Now we're masking off the, the neck a little bit. And then you can see on this fallout, if we like, try to push that out, look, all those points are just locked up in there. Uh, not exactly what we want, so I'm down to just con control Z. Uh, but we can also, make this mask go away entirely if we control drag off this off the uh off the character so you see that so mask on with control mask off with control drag off the surface so get used to that too that's a it's a it's a it's gonna be a useful functionality in zbrush because there's a, there's a lot of cool things you can do with that uh for instance a little, little little neat factoid that you can do with with a mask is like say if I, I draw this on here and then oops sorry I undid it um, if I wanted to like bevel this out I could uh, I could instead of dragging off the side over here I could just click off the side here and it reverses it right there you know so now if I sculpt on this then smooth this out a little bit and then if i undo my mask by control dragging off boom kind of starting to look like a uh, vision or something from marvel you know uh but yeah it's just a fun little fact but what we're interested in is not masking at the moment you'll notice that when i use move topological now Gonna, it moves these separate because these are still two separate meshes in here. They're in the same sub tool, in the same sub tool, two separate meshes though. And that seam is gonna stay there until we fuse that geometry. And there's a tool that's amazing for fusing geometry and rescanning the model. It's called DynaMesh. Um, one quick note about move brushes. So we're on move topological and I'm moving only this one, right? Because they're two separate meshes. If I go over to regular move right here and I move it, see how it's moving both those meshes? So that's the difference between move topological and move. So topological checks the, the surface of the mesh and sees if there's anything near that. Uh, move just grabs everything in like that area and moves it all. All right, so back to DynaMesh though. Been talking a lot about DynaMesh. Been talking it up. You're probably thinking, Mike, this better be dope. This better be a dope tool. Otherwise, I'm going to be very disappointed. And don't worry, it really is. So, again, it, it, I completely understand if you need to write notes for this because the, this UI is awful. Like, there's, we don't need like 
95% of this shit. Uh, we only need a few buttons in here. And uh, this is one of the first random buttons in our UI that we're going to need to know about. Uh, that's Dynamesh right here, this little boy. And uh, you see this resolution slider, that's going to be how like dense the polygons are going to be that's going to draw on our, on our model. Um, right now we're at 128, and I feel like it's going to be good resolution. That's like what we originally made the sphere at. Uh, and what we can do is we can just click this button off and then click it back on, and it will dynamesh these together. So I'll just show you that right now. Boom. So it's off, and it's back on. Boom. And you see that? Mmm. That's juicy. That is juicy. You see that? See how I just scan, rescan the model? And I'm just going over with alternate smooth over this to sort of even it out. But yes, model is completely rescanned at this point. Completely new geometry. And it completely fused those two shapes together. And, and feel free to start working again with that. It resamples everything and sort of evens out the, the spread between the polys, right? So if I turn on my polyline, my, my, or my poly frame, like you can see that it rescanned it as like a bunch of quads, and then on these little uh, side pieces, you get a lot of tries. So it's not clean geometry by any means, but it's something. It's something. It, it, it's something that, that it's it's scanning for. Uh, but yeah, completely useful for combining different meshes. Amazingly useful for that. Uh, beware though that if you if you like say you were dynameshing a a hand, and that hand were ha had like the fingers really close together, sometimes that dynamesh is too good at combining things, and it will combine the 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 space between the fingers together. Same with lips. If you have open lips, uh, like if you have like the interior of the mouth. If you dynamesh that, that's going to weld together that the, that front lip, you know. So just keep that in mind. Dynamesh is completely for welding things together like that. It's going to weld all those surfaces. Now let's do let's do those ears, just just to reaffirm these steps again. And after the lecture, if you, if you want like a, a refresher on like any of these actions, then completely ask me. If this is a new software we're dealing with. I know that's going to be a learning curve. Uh, don't be afraid to ask me questions. Um, so if I go into insert mesh primitives again, this can be how we add the majority of our geo. And I'm going to insert sphere approximately where that ear goes. I'm just looking at a small anatomy model next to me. Um, and then I'm just using my move brush, just using move. Getting that into the spot. There. Just general shapes right now. And we can go into this and start clay, uh, just start carving into that with our clay brush, brush with alt, you know, to get that shape in there. We can really start just pushing on these spots. Let's get this close because this ends up going back really close to the, to the skin right there. This might be a bit too misplaced. I think it's a bit too far forward, a little bit too high at the top of this. So I'm just using move brush for these big changes, you know. And you get this little swoop, swoopy boy in here. Right there. 
And that goes into the little lobe. The brush is lagging right there. there go, and I'm just smoothing again. I'm gonna use regular smooth to sort of destroy this surface, push it back in, but not too sharply. And here. And then I'm just gonna alt and really push in on that surface right there. There you go. So we, we have an ear represented in there. And same as before, we can dynamesh this, right? But first we need to remove this mask. So again, that's control, drag off the mesh. And then we can just dynamesh these two things together. Boom, bang, right there. So we have a free floating ear or uh, once free floating ear now is welted to that surface. And we can just smooth these points a little bit on the, on the seam right there. And we're good to go. Good to go. Might be sticking out a little bit too much. That's fine though. That's fine. But yeah, so I'll let you guys play around with that a little bit longer. Um, just remember your resolution on your Dynamesh changes how, how dense these polys are going to be. Um, so if you up that a lot, you're going to get a real dense mesh that's going to be hard, harder to work with. Um, I recommend keeping it to 128 at the max. I'm always down to go a little bit lower too, if you, if you want, you know, um, cause if you ever feel that ZBrush is kind of bullying you in terms of like when you're using your brush strokes across the, the surface, then it's probably because of the density of the mesh, probably a little bit too dense. Yeah, we don't like bullies in this class, you know? We're, we're very anti-bully here.
All right, at this point, I'm going to say everyone should save. Everyone should save their project. Now, you might want to go up to your Z, uh, your, your tools and save out a tool. Um, and then just go to save as, and that, that'll give you a low file size, but I like saving as, uh, I like going to file save as instead, and that'll save the entire project. So it's gonna save your, um, you, you all, of, all of your different, uh, your sub tools and how they are in the world and document, it's gonna save all that. It's gonna be a larger file size. So if you're running into file size problems, you wanna, might wanna save Z tools. Um, Problem with Z tools is that you have to like open up a, a fresh scene, import them, and then draw them out, and then click the edit. Like there's a, there's a few different steps in there, uh, so I like just going to file open, and then I mean file save as. My bad. Don't don't open. So file save project as. There, and I'm just going to say uh, class example. Head. And that's going to save. And there we go. So now I want to talk a little bit about sub tools. Sub tools. You've heard me say it. You've heard me say the word sub tools. We don't quite know what they're what they're used for. Basically, if you have a character, and like think of me, think of my face as a character. Let's stop my share. Think of my face as a character. Um, and I'm I'm just skin, right? Skin. And I got eyes. I got a hat. I got headphones you know um basically sub tools are how you split up each of those different parts so my head the skin this right here that's gonna be one sub tool that's one sub tool eyes they're they're separate right you could it's more but you could physically remove my eyes though like they're, they're separate objects right so that's another sub tool hat that's a separate sub tool in there you know Headphones, separate sub tools. So I want you guys thinking in terms of sub tools for that. And that's why I haven't added the eyes yet, is because we're going to add those as a separate sub tool. I'll show you two different ways to do that too. Two different ways. So let's hop back in now. Oh, it's auto saving. So my computer's going to lag for a little bit. ZBrush is going to do a lot of auto saving. Uh, You'll find that it probably is going to eat up a lot of memory. So feel free to find out where it's auto saving to and then delete some of those if you need to. So I'm sharing my screen again. So let's get let's get some eyes on here. And I'll do I'll do the simple way that we know about, but it's going to have one extra step. Let's look at our sub tool palette over here. Right side. Uh, a, a small little detail about this is that you can always drag through this. Like notice how like the menu extends off of the actual. Uh, does ZBrush back uh, save a backup anywhere? I think it crashed. Yeah, uh, Tam, when you open up in Lightbox, um, you'll see Quick Save. Like you'll see this tab right here. So you can open that up, and then it it can have some 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 Quick Saves in here. Uh, alternatively, in your Recents folder. So you see how. In recents, it has my, my, my most recent sculpts. Uh, so yeah, you can try for that as well. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, don't, don't rely entirely on that though. Please save often and always save as because you might do something where you like accidentally dynamesh your shirt to like your skin and then like you're not going to be able to fix that very easily. Um, so yeah, you, you'd want to always, always be working with backups, guys. Always be working with backups. Um, so yeah, I was talking about eyes. So we want the, we want the eyes to be a separate sub tool eventually. 
uh, and I'll show you guys really quick how to make those. So I am primitives. I'm just going to drag out some spheres here and let go. Boom, right there. Now, if you drag them out and then drag back in, you're going to get an oblong shape a little bit. So don't do that. Let's keep these as spherical as possible. Um, and then I'm going to immediately uh, see in your subtool menu over here, split unmasked points. Boom. Right there. See how we have a separate subtool now for this sphere? Now we can select these two different surfaces in here. And now when I sculpt on the head, so like say I go into clay buildup, that's not affecting that sphere at all. That's only on our, our, our skin. So that's why it's really useful to, to keep these separate. Uh, now I'm gonna use uh, the, my actual move tool, right? Not the brush. We're gonna use this move tool up here. So if you press this, you're gonna get a gizmo in here. That's kind of annoying to deal with sometimes. Uh, if you hold Alt, you can unlock it and reset its pivot. Uh, if you go to reset orientation right there, and then we can kind of move this back into space. And I'm just going side by side and let's get that back into the, into the head. I'm gonna turn on transparency over here so I can see where they, they're sitting. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good right there. Sure. Let's see. Yeah. All right, so that's set up in there now. It's gonna, the eye position is going to take a while to refine, you know. Uh, and then I'm, I'm just going to use, I'm just going to go back into my uh, clay buildup brush right there. And then I'm going to start carving away at this. Let's go reveal those eyes, you know. Let's reveal them. They're going to look, it's, it's, it's going to look weird for so long. Don't worry, guys. It's going to take a long time to get a good look, you know. We're like at that scene in the Matrix where Neo opens his eyes for the first time, you know. It's your first time in ZBrush. Never used ZBrush before. So yeah, definitely creepy looking. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna be using my move tool or my move brush now. Kind of pulling in on this. And these gotta go deeper in this direction. There. Man, computer really is lagging. I gotta get a new comp for this. Uh, another detail about the the eyes is that the eye upper eyelid extends out further than the lower eyelid on your face. Just make sure your characters or your, your, your heads have that represented as well. And it's looking less creepy, a little bit creepy still, you know, that's fine. That's fine. You can always keep refining and pushing on this. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's the that's the crash course for for getting a head in there. So that's the crash course. Um, if I wanted to do if I wanted to do the inside of the mouth, I would have to kind of delete this. Not really delete it, just crumple it in. I'm just carving in with clay buildup, right? Just carve all this in. Of 
all this up here as well. Oops. And notice how stretched out my geo is, right? Like, fuck, look at that. I can't use that inside there. Unusable. Instead, what I can do is to, to sort of fix that, since I want that inside of the mouth, I can Dynamesh this, right? So if I look at the polyline, if I turn that on, if I click that off, click it on again, Dynamesh. Oh, see that? Hmm. It resamples that surface, right, guys? It looks at it. It's like, man, this is just a mess. And then sort of goes in and gives us some, some workable geometry. It's not the best geometry by any means. Not the best at all. Um, but it's workable. It's workable. It's perfect for this, like, sort of early phase stuff, you know, for changing a lot of stuff. Perfect for this. Then you can go back in, sort of build up these lips again. So I'm just using, oops, I'm just using clay build up and smooth. I'm gonna do the same up here. Smooth that out. Slowly getting back. I'm using alternate smoothing, right? Because I want to maintain the the size of those lips. Just move these together. <laughs> Very creepy smile right there. That's fine. This is when masking is also very useful. Because if like see how I'm trying to if I'm trying to move these together, it's like moving the bottom one away. I want that bottom one to stay where it is, you know. Um, instead, what we can do is just mask off that bottom one, right? Now I can't move that bottom one. Instead, I can just move this down freely, right? Nothing to worry about there. And if I want to do the opposite, I just control click off the edge right there. And then move this up. And then just smooth this down. And now you might be thinking, you're like, oh, okay, Mike, I got you. you. You done goof, Mike. There's no way for you to, to Dynamesh again if you had to attach some to this. And you're you're pretty much right. You, in order to Dynamesh this, like, see, this is what I'm talking about with be careful about your Dynameshes is that I have an open mouth in here, right? There's a, there's a mouth inside there. If I Dynamesh, look at how it just welded a lot of that mouth shut. That mouth is just shut right there. Mildly terrifying. Yeah. It, I mean, it takes a while to get sculpts that aren't terrifying looking, you know. Uh, but in order to like resample this surface, we can use something called Z remesher, which is it's a it's a god level tool, guys. Like this is this is insane. So if we look at our if we look at our topology, look how garbage it is going like everywhere like there's no flow like nothing's no forms are being outlined nothing's going on there uh if we click z remesher and do same keep same polygon count because i like this density that i'm working with if i click z remesher it's going to take a while it's got to scan a bunch of polys that's going to go up in time like the the more points you have on your surface uh but watch the results just look at this polyline frame. Boom. See that? Mmm. 
Now you got geo, that's all quads, all quads outlining all of this stuff. Uh, it's not the best around these eyes, like this could be better, but like this is still insane though, guys. Like, and and it, it didn't compress the mouth together, it kept all that form in its proper size. So yeah, we feel free to go back in with clay buildup. You really need to work at that, at those features. But yeah, so that's the, that's the ZBrush crash course right there. That's as much information as I want to throw at you in one session. Um, so yeah, please uh, let's let's work on our let's work on our heads for a little bit more. Um, if you want to try to start, make something else, then go for it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's try. Let's. Uh, I, I want you guys to post your your like your in progress heads into uh, into zebra. Uh, not into zebra. Sorry. Uh, like take a screenshot of it and and post it in the art sharing channel. Oh, general. My internet died on me. Ricardo, no. Tragic. But yeah. So uh, just just to get a, a feel of what everyone's. What everyone's up to. So let's see how people are feeling about the ZBrush, you know. So yeah, we, we can do that. We can do that once we go to dinner. And then when we get back, that's when you can start on your on your uh, actual projects. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys a, a quick method. It's gonna be using all existing tools that you know about or that we've covered uh, to sort of cr quickly create uh, a character quickly get the 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 sizes and dimensions of them. But yeah, so let's just let's just chill for a little bit and work on this. I'm gonna pause the recording. Zoom recording. All right, so uh, there's a few things we need to do to set this up. And I want to get some reference in the scene. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. So I go up to texture. Then under texture, I go to import. And then I'm going to import my reference image. Uh, I believe I can just shift click both of them. And then I have access to both. I'm going to open, boom, bang, nothing happened. I'm going to go to texture. I'm going to click on one of these. And I'm going to click add to spotlight. Boom. There you go. So it adds that. I'm gonna also do that with the other one, the side one. I'm gonna click that add to spotlight button. Boom, there you go. So now we have some images that we can drag around for you like, Mike, you imported both, but I only see one. Um, you can click these, this little tile unified button and then it scales them up nicely. Very easy to see. So now we have some, some reference in the scene. You can start, you can, you can go over any of these buttons and it'll show you what's going on. Uh, it, like it, it'll say what it's going to do. That's rotate, that's scale, uh, it's pin spotlight, spotlight radius, opacity. You can crank this up, you can crank it down, uh, whatever you want to do there. Right. But then if you try to do anything in your sculpt, notice how I'm still in spotlight mode, right? So to toggle out of spotlight mode, you press Z. Boom. So now you're in sculpt mode. And then you try to sculpt, right? And you're like, what the fuck? I can't sculpt. Mike, what's going on? Mike, help. One last button to click in here. You go up to brush, samples, spotlight projection. And there you go. It's all done. All done there. Uh, let me turn this intensity down. My God, that was insane. Insane intensity. It still is insane. My God, all right, that's, that's, more, that's more reasonable. Um, but yeah, so a, a few steps there. Uh, I can go over that later, but I'm just gonna go over general character creation now. So with my reference images, now I can start kind of, uh, I'm just gonna use move topological for a lot of this, right? For a lot of this, make sure your symmetry is on. If it's not on, press X. Remember, X turns symmetry on and off right there. And I'm sure you can see what I'm starting to do already, you know? Like it's, 
pretty simple process. You're just gonna you're just gonna sort of start dragging these shapes out into the into the shape that you need for that that head, right? If we go to the side, you can see. Um, in order to match this, like say say your reference image is a little bit off center. Um, you can go into an orthographic camera to match things up a little bit better if it's off off center like this. So if I press P, it's going to toggle between those, and then then you can go ahead and I, I would just toggle back into spotlight though, honestly, and then just drag on top of here and scale it up if you wanted to get really precise, you know, with with matching things up. Then again, it's Z to toggle back into toggle back into regular mode, regular sculpting mode. I'm just, I'm just scaling it around this stuff, right? Getting these silhouettes to sort of match my reference image. There you go. Um, going back into spotlight, I'm gonna drag this boy over, scale that boy down. All right, so then um, Z to toggle out of that again. Now we need to like start making the rest of the character, you know. We need to make the rest of the character. So if you if you remember back to when we were doing that head, we're gonna use IMM primitives. IMM primitives. And I'm gonna put in the neck. I'm just gonna draw that right there. Boom. Immediately go in, start moving this around. Big brush, big brush, big move right here. Big move. And then again, I am in primitive. Insert sphere, drag that out. And this is going to be the to upper torso. So let's drag that into position. Um, I've already done this once for the other class, and I found that I didn't quite like the, uh, the length of this torso with this character. It just it ends up looking too bunched up. And in the posing in the animation, that's when I'm going to make him look bunched up. So I kind of shied away from doing it like that. Uh, but yeah, some stuff in 3D just takes a little bit of work to, to see how it's going to go. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. And then another IMM primitive for the lower torso right here. Boom. We can get this nice and proportioned out. Let's give them a little bit of hips here as well. And then back to IMM primitives. I'm going to draw some deltoids up here. So let's get this big muscle group represented. And uh, I would be, if I wasn't hurrying, I would be constantly checking to make sure my proportions match and look good in 3D space. Uh, but I'm just trying to get through the lesson for y'all. So then I'm in primitive again. Dragging this in there. And our rat is honestly kind of jacked. So let's make sure that he looks jacked in the sculpt looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right, and then another I'm improved. Basically, we're just attaching spheres and scaling them up, right? And might seem a little bit caveman-y, but like it, 
it lets you focus on shape language so much. Like I, I love this this method, you know, for, for getting stylized characters. You can even do realistic characters this way too. Like if you, if you really dial in these these forms, the sky is the limit, you know. And the more time you spend in this step, is the, the better your sculpt's gonna be. Because you're gonna really get in those proportions. Um, ZBrush people, what are you gonna be what are you gonna be making for your, your first project here? It's gonna be a character, gonna be a prop, gonna be I mean, well, I want to. I, I want to get some ideas of what you guys are creating, so I can kind of help with that process. You know. You can make a stuffed animal prop. Hell yeah! Absolutely, that'll be that'll be perfect for this. Perfect for this. Other ZBrush people, what are you making? What are you making? I want to make a character. Gracia, send me a picture of that character because honestly, a full body character, that might be a full semester uh, or like a back half of the semester type project, you know? In which case I'll, I'll grade you on your progress, similar to how if, if you're doing like an extreme animation, then I'll grade you on your progress through that as well. Ah, okay. I have a character concepts for my viz dev class that I want to take a crack at. Yeah, Tam, send. Yeah, could you post some pictures in, in Discord, guys, of, of what you of your of your reference because I, I'd love to I'd love to take a peek at it. I'd love to take a peek at it. And yeah, this this process, you know, it's uh, a little bit slow going, but I mean I, I I'm having fun here. So I'm just having a chill time. Again, that's just IMM primitives putting those into position. Um, after this, I'm probably going to talk about a few little pitfalls that you'll run into in ZBrush and exactly what to do with that. So um, keep your minds open for that part because it's going to be, a, I, I'm sure a lot of you are going to run into these problems. They happen to 100% of the people that use ZBrush because <laughs> ZBrush sometimes doesn't make sense because it's completely different from any other 3D program. Yeah, so that's the feet in there. And basically what I'm doing is just constructing that underlying anatomy, right guys? Like this is what the uh, anatomy kind of looks like underneath the skin. Um, now I, I would I would do hands as well, and I would I would do it the same exact way. I would just append I'm in primitive for the palm, and then move topological, move that into position right there. And then get this all sculpted up right here. And then I would just append each of those, or I would just do IMM primitive for each of like the, uh, the fingers, maybe even the joints, like the each digit in the fingers, like you get that detailed in there. Um, and then you, you got it. You got the uh, the character. I mean, I don't have the ears, you know. I have to go in and do that. Let's attach some big ears right here. And then I'd use clay build up on this because they're like they're gonna be concave a little bit in there. So 
Let's get that going on here. All right, there we go. There we go. Probably too still still too bulgy right there. And I would use move brush, our trusty move brush. And move that into the skull right there. Like, 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 like I have like basically the 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 skeletal system of a character done. The big muscle groups, big everything, you know. Um, basically just trying to get that character as roughly represented as possible, as, as soon as possible. Um, I, I would also recommend maybe creating the head out of multiple uh, multiple primitives. Um, really look at, let's see if I can find it. I'm going to post this into logic called easy. Um, this is basically the guy that I, I, I took the this method of sculpting from. Um, here we go. Um, he has a beautiful voice as well. Oh, you know what I need to do. Irish accent, but look at look at how he he constructs his characters. Right, he's only he's only focusing on the face. Starts with that sphere. He makes two right there. Process. So he has two different objects right there. But it's not really. I believe his are two separate sub tools. If I'm not mistaken. Nope, every single line. And look, look at how he's just creating these basic shapes, you know. Basic. Shapes. So he's going down and splitting the the head even up into these separate shapes. So, like I said, the more time you put into this step, the the better results you're gonna get. Boy socket or anything like that. But you're just thinking. Great. But yeah, and he's got the nose in there now too. Luke's where I want. And he's working super low poly, guys. Look at how low poly that is. I he he his 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 philosophy is that he'll he'll work as low poly as he can. That way, it's easy to smooth things out, easy to get clean shapes, and then the computer's going to do the smoothing for him. So that's how, that's how he gets these clean, clean ass shapes in here. You know, like this, like that. That's super clean. Like that. That's 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 his sort of approach to it. Um. But yeah. So that's that's what I'm preaching to you guys. I 100% recommend it because we're your, like our the other courses at the school already kind of get us thinking about shape and all that and dimension. And I find I find that this would be a, an easy sort of uh, expansion upon that. But yeah, so there you go. Uh, once you have that character fully sort of represented. Then uh, I always save before you do this. I'm not, I'm not saving because you know I like to live life on the edge. Apparently, um, and you have all these different groups set up. You're going to dynamesh them together. So if I press dynamesh, see how it sort of went in and smooth. Uh, it, it, it welded all of those points together. Uh, we could probably even go down in resolution a little bit and go down to 96, see what that looks like. Isn't too bad. Um, some some places are probably looking a little bit rough, you know. Um, that's why I say you always benefit from from spending more time on that on that shaping phase where you, you shape out every single thing with those IMM primitives. Because when you get to this stage, uh, like stuff like this would have looked, would have looked cleaner if I spent more time on it, but now I'd have to go back in and sort of use click build up and start pushing in on that, getting the, the anatomy to work with, uh, with my regular sculpting tools. But yeah, so that's it. That's the, that's the basics of, of character creation. Um, if you're doing a character and I, I, I'm, I'm completely down for you to do that. Uh, this is, this is the most, 
intuitive way I've found to do it. The alternative would have been stretching out like a sphere, stretching it out, and then I can even show you. So like, say you, you had like wings or something. Uh, if you went and you, you stretched out the verts super far, and then brought that back in, brought that back in. Uh, but then you have, you have a bunch of like stretched out geometry right there, right? Then you'd have to dynamesh that again. So now it's more even geometry, kind of smooth that back into position and then sculpt on that. Like that's how you'd have to make everything. That's why I much prefer the IMM primitives. Much, much prefer it. It is 100% better. And then, yeah, it's just focusing on anatomy, proportion, everything in there. Um, a little bit of, like, uh, so you basically, I'd like to see you guys get as far along. If you're doing a character, get, get like, everything to this stage get it to the stage where um, the shapes are really refined and uh, you're uh, you've uh, dynamesh but say, save out a file before because dynamesh is kind of a destructive process um, but yeah so say, save out a file before you do that uh, but yeah I'd like I'd like to see the sculptors start to really hit the hit the ground running because uh, it's stacked against you not knowing the software going into it. So it's going to take a lot of uh, trial and error, honestly. Um, but yeah, does that does that conceptually make sense to you guys about using the IMM primitives and sort of making each different chunk? And you can get you can get super detailed on those. Right, so um, I would save this out, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I have a, a further along version for the other class. Uh, but I'm gonna go to, um, it, so I'm gonna go over some, some classic pitfalls in ZBrush now, classic pitfalls. Uh, so sometimes, you'll hit a button, you'll do something, and uh, you'll switch into something called 2.5D mode. So I'm gonna switch into that. And now look at what happened. Like, what, look at this madness. Like, what, what, what? Who have I cursed and, and why? Why is this happening? So you're, I'm 1000% sure that someone's gonna run into this problem in class. So please pay attention to this. If you see this happening, then know you can always come back to the video to see how to fix it. Um, it's actually cool because this is a 2.5D mode where none of these objects I, I, are 3D. They're all basically 2D. And that's because ZBrush works by cheating a lot of 3D and reducing stuff down to 2D. So it's like it's doing some under the hood trickery so that it lets us sculpt with like super high amounts of points. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you have this and you're like, how, how do I even fix this mic? Like what's going on here? I can't go back into edit mode. You know, I have a bunch of these random ones sitting in the scene. What you got to do is go to document, new document, boom. Then be like, documents change. We actually save changes? No. Boom. Clean document right there. You're just going to draw out again. You're going to draw that one, just one out into there. Then you're going to hit edit. Boom. And there you go. There you go. Tells this blue line. What? It's like across. 
Did I somehow draw on Zoom? <laughs> I might have drawn on Zoom somehow. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Annotate. I think someone annotated with Raster. I see you two have no overabundance of rats. Um, oh, wait. Clear. Oh, my God. Clear all drawings. There we go. All right. Some, someone annotated on the Zoom call somehow. <laughs> My probably was me doing some hockey, but yeah, so that's how you do it. You just go to new document, um, fresh one, and then you just left click, drag out in the canvas, and then immediately hit edit. Otherwise, you're going to be in 2.5D mode. Boom, there you go. That's how you fix it. That's like the most, that's the most like beginner problem in ZBrush. It's going to always happen. Uh, and you're going to be like, what, what does this even mean? What is this ZBrush madness? Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's that one's uh, fixed up now. Um, let's go over pinching. So often, uh, let's see if I can recreate this. Oops. Let's go move topological. And let's spread this out. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to smooth. I'm holding just regular shift. And you'll see that this is, it'll work better if I down mesh it again. Yeah, there we go. So this is getting pinched into oblivion. Look at this. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's getting pinched, guys. What do we do? What the, how do you even fix that? You can't like pull it, you can't sculpt it because it's just getting even more pinched. Um, what you have to use is a brush called Inflate. And it's I, N, it's called, actually it's called Inflat, my bad. <laughs> Inflat, and that's gonna expand this out like a balloon, it doesn't look pretty, right? Does not look pretty. However, it is usable. So now this is expanded. What we can do is we can hold shift and click down and then let go of shift and do some alternate smoothing. See that? Oh, there we go. All right, it's uh, pieces restored to the galaxy. Um, also have a weird alpha on there, let me turn that off. Um, and yeah, so that, now it's going to bulge up nice and evenly. And there you go. So that's how you fix pinching. It's just that inflate brush and alternate smoothing, which is smoothing, but then letting go of shift while you're still smoothing. And yeah. There we go. Uh, you'll also commonly see if you Dynamesh, a really thin piece of Geo, let's see if we can get it to work. I'm just pushing these into each other. So this is like, this This mesh is basically pinched, bit, like so thin that it's in between itself. And let's see if Dynamesh messes up there. Uh, remarkably, it it made it nice. It didn't, it didn't mess it up too bad. Um, what it can do, though, is sometimes make a punch a hole through your model. Sometimes it can just straight up, like you'll see a lot of like weird, uh, almost fabricy, teary shapes in there. That just means that you you dynameshed, so you just undo that dynamesh and uh, you, you dynamesh something that was too thin on top of itself, and you just need to go back over it with uh, inflate, and you should be good to go. Um, so that's another pitfall. Um, uh, another pitfall is how do I delete shit? Like, look at this extra stuff that I, that I put on this here. I don't want this. Like, this looks awful. Um, there's a nice, there's a nice little tool called the trim tools. To be, if you hold control and shift, uh, and if I use trim rectangle, go over that. Boom, look how it flattens that out. 
pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So, and then you could start sculpting on that. I'd probably Dynamesh first. Dynamesh that up. And then start smoothing out right there. Um, what to do if your symmetry falls off. So if your symmetry falls off, say I, I mean, my symmetry is already kind of off from that trim. But let's say if it's really off. Say I, so I want, I want this left side, I, I mean, this screen right side over on that left side, right? Um, what we do is deformation and mirror in conjunction with geometry modified topology mirror and weld. So if I do mirror and weld, watch what happens. Boom. It mirrors that other side over to this side. We were we have the wrong side completed. Well, not wrong side, it's just in ZBrush's eyes of how it works. So if we go to deformation, mirror that over first. You see that? And then geometry, mirror and weld. Boom. Symmetry is now restored. Um, sometimes your pivot point can go off. So like the pivot point of this mesh could get reset uh, and be offset. What you need to do is just go to transform, set pivot, click that twice. Boom. Um, trying to think of some other pitfalls. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, you guys know about deleting, uh, you, you guys know about deleting sub tools, but uh, sometimes you'll run into things that you want to delete. Like say I wanted to delete this leg. Uh, there's, a, there's a cool way we can do this with masking. So if I just mask over this, boom. Uh, let me turn on symmetry actually, boom. And then if I go to split masked points, boom, you see that it's in a different sub tool now. Rat is now, upper rat is now uh, on this other sub tool. Oops. And you can turn these, the visibility off and on on these. Um, and if you want to get rid of this, then you just select that sub tool and do delete. Boom. There you go. There we go. So that's pretty much the, the main pitfalls. Uh, another pitfall is always if, you, if you're sculpting. Um, and let's, let's work. I'm, I'm just going to Z remesh this again. Y'all you, you saw it before, but it'll be nice to just show it again. Uh, Z remesher, keep groups, smooth groups down to nothing. Uh, I, I usually Z remesh at half because I like working at lower poly. Um, I was going to do that. It, it's going to think for a while for this. But um, I'm going to show you guys going too, too dense in your polygons too, too early. Um, when you're when you're getting like the like before you hit the refining stage, I'll show you what that looks like. So there you go, nice and clean. Some of it got torn up down here. Um, you can just use your alternate smoothing to, to sort of fix that up, and it'll look a lot nicer. My God, it really messed with this. Wow. Okay. I'm going to do Z mesh half again. I'm going to smooth groups this time. Hopefully that'll, that'll help alleviate that. Yeah, it should take half the time as last time. There we go. Still a bit jarbly in some of these spots, but we can just smooth that out. Again, I'm using alternate smooth. I'm going to preach about alternate smooth because I'm alternate smooth's biggest fan. But yeah, there we go. 
Um, so yeah, big, oops, there we go. Um, classic mistake is to be like, okay, I'm sculpting along here and I'm getting some really cool, really cool shapes going on. Love these shapes. Gotta love them. Awesome shapes going on here. Um, and then you get to a point where you're like, all right, I want to subdivide this. Remember, you have to divide under geometry. If you click it, it gets smoother, right? And you're like, ah, yeah, nice. It's looking even cleaner now. Super clean. I can even define this stuff. It's looking great. Um, and you go up again. You, at this point, you're addicted to the, the smoothness. To the smoothness of it. You're getting like, oh, man, I can, these shapes are so nice. I love these shapes. And then you start losing a little bit of control on your objects, right? So say you wanted to sculpt some, some hex. There you go. Pex sculpted. And it's kind of getting harder to smooth now. It's getting a little bit harder to smooth. You're gonna get a, like, a lot of lumpiness. Um, when you're making big changes like this, if you have subdivision levels, always go down to subdivision level one, you know, then boom, you can just, you can just push this around easy, easy style. Make some abs in here. Kind of push and pull on this right there. Make that rib cage with the serratus muscles. Let's get some some lats in there. So if you're if you're working with subdivision levels and you're making big changes, please step down. That way it's super easy. Then you can always go up to subdivision level three again, or whatever subdivision level you're at. Now you can even go incrementally, like to two, and then be like, okay, I'm gonna fix some more stuff right here before going up again, you know? So yeah, so that's, that's about the last common uh, starter mistake. So I'm going to, at this point, pause recording, or maybe I might, might stop it for the whole day, but.